So let's talk about pipeline input in PowerShell. Now for the example that I'm going to use here, <clears throat> we're going to pretend like we're wanting to manage multiple services at the same time. And so what I've done is I've created a little text file. We do get child item so you can see it here. Spell item correctly, there we go. Name services.csv. <clears throat> And if I do a get content on services.csv, you're going to see that we have the, it's comma, sep, comma separated variable. So this top line here sets our column description, service and description. And I've got the service name, comma, the actual description of it. So if I do an import dash CSV services.csv, you'll see here we have actual PowerShell objects, bits, spooler, and uh, Windows search. Now, what I should be able to do is I should be able to import this content and then manage those services in a block. So start all of them, stop all of them, check all of them, just by importing this data. Now, the techniques that I'm showing you here, you can do the same thing getting data from any other source. So it can be a text file, it can be from Active Directory, you can use these techniques to uh, get AD user or get AD computer and then uh, use the input or the output of those commands as input, input for other commands. It's all going to be using the same techniques but I'm trying to do it here using tools that I know everybody should have access to which is standard services. Okay, now here's what I want to do. I want to import uh, these services and then I want to get the status of them. So if I do import CSV services.csv and pipe that to get service, it's actually not going to work for me. And the reason it doesn't is because PowerShell doesn't recognize it. it cannot find any service with a name and PowerShell has no idea how to handle this. So let's talk about what's happening here. Let's start by doing a get help on get service. And let's pipe that to more. So I want to get these services by name. And I'm going to see here I have get service that has a name parameter. So if I want to look at that parameter, I can do get help dash full and scroll through it, or I can do get help forget service dash parameter name and what we're looking at is this line right here accept pipeline input and it accepts pipeline input true means yes it does and it does it by property name or by value now by property name means it's looking for the name uh, that matches so it's looking for an a property of whatever object it's looking at that has a name that matches name. And if we do, let's just real quick get, not get, import CSV services.csv, we're going to see a property service and a property description, but no property name. And so consequently, it can't match up these objects with the name, and so it can't find the services. Now this will also accept input by value and for that we're looking for string values but we don't have string values because if we do import services CSV and get member you're going to see these aren't strings these are PS custom objects and so because of that we can't match up a property name and we can't match up a value so what we get is import services there we go a bunch of errors. Now there are two different ways to fix this. The first is by creating custom properties and the second is by exporting property uh, or expanding property objects. So let's talk about the first one. Let me go back to import CSV services.csv. Now remember we're looking for a a property named name that we can match up to the name property of our get services commandlet and I don't have one so what we can do is we can use select object to create that so I'm going to pipe this to select 
object asterisk. Now that's going to show me all of my objects. Now if I want to create a custom object, what I'll do is I'll do a comma to add on another object. And I don't have to, right? I could skip the asterisk, but I want to show you how this works using the asterisk. So select everything and then we're going to add a custom object. And the way we do this, the syntax is going to be a little funky. It's at sign and then open curly brackets. And now we're looking for a label or a name. So it's got to be L equals N equals label equals or name equals. So I'm just going to do L equals and that's going to be my label and I'm going to put that in text and I'm going to call it name. So that's going to be a property value or the name of the property. Then I need to set a value for that. So I'm going to do the semicolon and to set the value we're going to do E equals. So E stands for expression. So the label is going to be the name. The expression is going to equal another open curly brackets and this is going to be the script block. And it's going to be dollar sign underscore period. That says look at this object and then I want to assign a specific property service and we're going to take this value and we're going to assign that to the expression which is going to match up with a lay with the property name of name now I'll, I've done two open curly brackets and only one closed curly bracket so I need to close my other curly bracket and now when I hit enter you're going to see we have three properties service description and then the custom property we just created called name and it just assigned this value over to that property as well. But now I've got a property named name. And remember when we did get help on that uh, parameter, it said it could accept input. Let me do that again. Get help on get service parameter name. And we saw that it will accept pipeline input by property name. Well, now I have a property name that matches the name of this parameter. So what I should be able to do is take all of that and pipe it to get service. And now it works and it gets me just those three services. Now I can do anything with these. I can stop all of them. Let's pipe them to stop service. and that'll stop all of them. I can pipe them back to get service and make sure that it actually did it. Now I can send them all to start service and then up there to run it again and do it to get service to make sure that it worked. By the way, I can do this. Let's do a stop See if I could type stop service and then I'm going to pipe it to get service to see if it actually did it. And now it stops all of those services. Now the reason that it doesn't continue on is because stop service doesn't produce any output. And so it stops it at that point. There's no output then to be passed on to get service. So just something for you to be aware of. Let me do my get service and we'll see that bits is actually restarted in the meantime while we've been playing. Okay, so this is one way to do it. We'll use select object and then we can create a custom property name and that is one approach. Now the other approach is to use the expand property. So let's look at this. We're gonna do import CSV, move my mouse out of the way, services dot csv and what I want is just this service property so I would do that get that by using select object service and that shows me just that service property however if I pipe that to get member you're gonna see that it's still APS custom object and it doesn't have a name because it's service it's not going to match for uh, input by property name what I need to do is do input by value which means I need to extract the text value out of those and get or select object has a way to do that 
its expand property. So this is what it's going to look like. Import service or import CSV, services.csv, select object, and then expand the property of the property named service. And so when I run that, it's going to give me just the text. And I can verify that this works by piping that to get member, and this I'm going to have to pipe through more. And we're going to see that now we're dealing with string values. No longer PS objects, we're dealing with string values. Let me hit my up arrow again. So now I should be able to pipe that to start service. And remember, get service, start service, stop service, they all have that name parameter, and they will all accept input by property name or by value. And so now I'm inputting by value because I have those values as uh, text strings. And so when I do my get service, we see that we have started them and we're now getting the value. So this is doing it both ways. I'm importing data from a CSV file. In the first example, I was manipulating those PS custom objects by creating a custom property that would have the same name as the same property name as the name uh, parameter so that PowerShell could match them up and take those objects and use them. That's the by property name. Uh, input and then the second time I did it where I extracted the text as strings and so PowerShell in that case did the by value. Now there is another way to do this, another example that uh, you might see and that is we flip the order of this. So it's get service and now I can open parentheses and do import CSV services.csv. Now this isn't going to work for the same reasons that we had before, which means now I need to do one of those two options that we did. So I'm going to do this select object expand property and you actually only have to do expand by the way. I'm doing the whole thing to give you the whole um, parameter name and I want to expand service. And now it's going to work because this expands service into a list of text, uh, series of text strings, which then get service can take as an input. Now, I also want you to know, I didn't notice that I didn't specify the name parameter here. And that's because, let's do get help for get service for parameter name and you're going to see that this is a positional parameter, position 0. Now depending on what version of PowerShell you're running it might say position 1. Some versions of PowerShell start by counting to 1, some start by counting at 0. Don't worry about that. Just know what your particular version of PowerShell does. So because this is a positional parameter I didn't have to specify it. If it wasn't a positional parameter or if I wanted to specify it for clarity it would be this get service name import csv services.csv pipe it to select object expand the property service and this is the exact same thing except now I specified the parameter name so we know we know where it's supposed to go. PowerShell automatically does it. It's basically what it does is it sees get service and then it sees the names of them like this. Bits, spooler, w search. Okay. Which raises the question, why not just type all of them out? Why not type out those here? Well, the reason is you may want to change the services that you're managing on a regular basis. And to do that, all I have to do is change my CSV file. And now I can add additional services that I'm bulk managing, remove services out that I'm bulk managing without ever changing my commands just because, or by just changing the CSV file.
Now, this was an example of how you would use this. There's going to be lots of ways to do this, right? You can do this with a list of computer names. You can do it with computer names you pull from Active Directory. You can, I mean, lots of different ways you can use these techniques. The idea is we're taking data and we're doing pipeline input into our commandlets. And those commandlets then can take that information and do things on a lot of different objects simultaneously. And that's one of the ways that we really like to use PowerShell. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. I know we covered some little funky techniques here. By the way, doing this one, you can do the import CSV. You can do the custom property the way that we showed earlier rather than doing the expand property here. Either one will work. So if you need to watch this video a couple of times, hopefully it'll come together for you. Do a little bit of practicing on your own. You can do it with services. You can do it with computer names. If you've got a lab with multiple computers, that works great. You can create a dash computers. And you can do a... You can do get service, get property, get event log, whatever dash computer name, and then input those computer names from your CSV file. Lots of different ways that you can practice this. But it will take some practice to get right. Some of the, this one's pretty straightforward. The custom properties is a little bit funky of a syntax, but with a little bit of practice, it comes together and it is a very useful, very powerful tool.